am here at the Art Center of Estes Park, and I'm interviewing Pat Seaburn, the featured artist, and she's going to tell me about the pieces in her show. The dirt in this one was red along the side. Mm -hmm. There's so much red soil there. So I needed to portray that with the rocks that appeared there. But a lot of it is reflected from this uh, this whole cliff face here that was bushes and, well, mostly low-growing bushes and things, so it could cling to that surface. And then all of the, the timber and the, the other trees and the reflections there. But then, with the sun coming this way, there were, there were trees here that were casting shadows, and yet there were a few openings there where you get a little sliver of light that comes through and just highlights some of the rocks. And then you get a little dollop of yeah. uh, sky there. So it's just one of those <laughs> those yummy things again that is... Yes, and this is the title piece it for the show. A, mm -hmm. a blaze of color. These two were done when I was doing only Western art. Uh -huh. At the time, we were participating in Primitive Rendezvous, which is kind of a celebration of the frontier west sure. during 1780 to 1830 and uh, at these we would stay in teepees and wear buckskins and there was a lot of black powder competition and hawk throwing as, as an artist attending these there was always something to take a photograph of that could be a potential painting that's wonderful. And these these paintings, what medium did you use to make? These are both oil. The upper one is studying tracks, and the lower one is heading home. A lot of the mountain men had friendships and relationships with a lot of the Indian tribes that were friendly, uh -huh. and they became the buyers of a lot of trade goods, which were blankets, Hudson Bay blankets, as you yeah. see the, oh, the lower painting there. This mountain man is wearing one. It was called a capote and they made them out of Hudson Bay blankets. Uh, trade beads from the glass beads from Czechoslovakia were a big trade. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And ultimately canvas. This one is garden room and uh, taking pictures at, at garden centers where they have stacks of pots and the local cat is in charge oh. and you have watering cans and hanging Boston fern and, and geraniums and just about everything. It's just such a pleasant place and that just is such a summer quilt of colors and textures yes. and things. It's a kind of a fun thing. That is also pastel on sandpaper. This one is Bear Creek Native and that was from some pictures that I took. This is in southwest Denver. It was just the neighborhood, or actually around my high schooler's school, but they had left that area wild. It just had so many wonderful shadows and, and Bear Creek wandering through, so... And that one is pastel on sandpaper as well. I set this still life up several times. The cats kept rearranging it, so it, it never looked the same twice. Right. But, that one is also pastel on sandpaper. This is Snow Mountain Creek, and that is over on the western slope, and it was fall. I was there for a conference and took a hike up to the Snow Mountain Waterfall. The fall colors along the creek, it wasn't a very substantial creek, but it was really pretty on this particular day. A lot of reflections in the, in the trickle of water and the color beside the stump looked like it had been exposed like that for a long time. So sure. It, it had a lot of character. This is an oil and it's on a museum wrap canvas, which mm -hmm. means it's wrapped around the side of the wooden support, which means that you really should continue the subject on around the sides since right. it doesn't require a frame, which is kind of a fun thing to do. You have yeah. to imagine how the rocks would develop and how the trees yes. would be. It's called his domain. There are so many of these magpies around. They just, uh, they're the, probably the, the, one of the, one of the most popular bird residents. So he'll be sitting on this branch and looking out over his domain as we imagine he would think. 
This has AR glass on it, which is anti-reflective, so it does yield some reflection, but not as many. Ironic that the, <laughs> the painting is of reflections. Reflections, exactly. <laughs> it's, it is called Afternoon Reflections, and it was taken on a, uh, it was a street scene in Aspen a few years ago when there was a restaurant called The Mother Load. It was a bright sunny day and all of those shadows above were from the trees uh, along the walkway there and all of the flower boxes were just oh. wild with color. Yes. So that was the first reason why I stopped and then I started looking at the windows. And I like doing things that are more difficult because of all of the different elements in there. They make you really think. But this is a sign inside that, that talks about the specials for the day. And a couple of these little chair yes. backs that you yeah. can see. Then all of the just general reflections and all of the shadows down here with some of the little blossoms falling. So it was a feast of color and challenges and so forth. So I, I really loved doing it. This one is a pastel and it's called After the Rain. Colorado even actually named for all of its red soil. This one shows all of the red dirt in a lot of the mountain roads that go from lake to lake and the aspen thrive in that kind of thing. They're just such a lovely addition to a lake picture and showing the red dirt as well. That one is also a pastel. And this one is also a pastel, that is museum glass. It uh, was a place around Divide, which is down by Woodland Park. Just a, an open kind of a scene because a lot of the river through there is heavily wooded so it's lots of lots of trees and shadows and it's hard to find a sunny spot that little waterfall and the shadows of the trees on the opposite bank or make it kind of interesting this is the beauty of summer this was a, wasn't really a meadow but it was just part of us of a stream that went through the forest and it just shows how dense and beautiful so many aspects of it are from the from the variety of trees and places where the sun beat through and the bushes around the edges and the reflections of the stones in the creek and the stones that are off to the side and the reflections of the trees up there down here. Mm. There's just so much going on that it's one of those <laughs> just delicious to work on because of yeah. all of the challenges. This one is High Country Meadow. It is also pastel on sandpaper, and this one does have museum glass. It was kind of an Olympic meadow up in the Northwest. It was not quite fall yet, but all of the weeds and flowers and growy things along the edge were starting to get dry and just add sprinkly color along when you see it against uh, the shadow that falls across the area from the trees that are standing. Yes. And then the sky color is reflected in all of that, so you have that color plus the reflection of the stones, the big rocks in the, in the water. All of those things and the shadows, when the light is warm, the shadows are cool. The shadows have a lot of violet in them. It's another one of those things that just <laughs> so mm. much fun to put it all together because of all of the different things that are challenging. This is an oil. I got this image driving up to um, Kashlapooter Canyon, Kashlapooter mm. River, and it was in the fall. It, we chose that day, and actually it was a little overcast, so mm. it was a little foggy, but um, the, the colors was, were still so brilliant that it, was, that it was so inspiring and so exciting to see clusters of that. So when you get a good water uh, area there, even even when the water is really moving like, like it appears to be right there, you mm -hmm. can still see a lot of that color reflected. So you get shadows from the big rocks at, at the edge mm -hmm. of the creek and shadows from the rocks in the edge and then reflections from all of that. So you have to remember when you're painting that shadows and reflections are different things. 
and they don't necessarily come from the same direction. <laughs> so you really have to stop and think how all of that falls into place. This is Sun-Kissed Bank, and uh, most of it is in soft shade. It wasn't a, a dark shadow or anything, but it was just that the bank on the far side was in bright sun, and, and it just lit up. Yeah, there weren't any real big bushes or anything, but just on the prairie grass right there and the edge of, of the creek with all the cutaway bank and some stones and things, it was just one of those Beautiful. color contrasts that was just so yummy. And as, it, as the water comes around here, you see the rocks under the water. As it comes here and it's mm -hmm. still kind of shadowed, but still see that they are underwater. And that, that one is a pastel. This little one is uh, the final approach, and chickadees are just one of those little birds. They're just cheap, cheap, and, and so chirpy and just cute. Everything about them is just happy, So, and we see a lot of them. They're one of our favorite little songbirds. So this one is, is just landing while another one watches on, and uh, they just are fussy, funny little birds. So this one is done in watercolor.